Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting Miles Morales Spider-Man from Marvel Crisis Protocol in comic style. Now Miles' costume is predominantly black and that's going to make this a good tutorial follow for even other characters like Black Widow or Red Skull. I'm going to start by base coating the black with P3 Coal Black which is a really really dark turquoise-ish blue. We'll highlight that up with some Troll Blood base as well. I'll be using P3 Amethyst Rose and Kador Red base for the red parts of the costume. You could substitute these with Corn Red and Evil Sun Scarlet if you're using Citadel paint. For Miles' eye lenses and some final highlights on the black, I'll be using Underbelly Blue, and I may dip into some white as well, so I'm using P3 Mora White here. Lastly, no comic style tutorial will be complete without a little bit of Higgins Black Magic. So I'm going to dive right in and just base coat the majority of the costume with coal black. This is basically going to be everything except for the shoulders, head, and fingertips. The rest of his costume, straight up black. Most of the red on Miles' costume is actually webbing over black as well, so you actually want to make sure you fill in all those areas between the webs with black, and really when it comes down to it, it's really easy to just make his whole costume black and then fill in the other details later. So just head to toe, finger to finger, just go with this coal black base coat everywhere and sort it out later. So now I've switched to P3 Troll Blood base. This is my first highlight on the black, and what I want to do here is I'm trying to keep it to no more than 30% of the surface. When I'm painting black, I use a sort of fictional ratio, I call it 60 30 10, and it's not an exact science. I mean, I'm, I'm really eyeballing everything here. But the idea is that 60% of the black should be a solid deep black, or in this case, I'm using coal black because I want a little room for that black ink later. 30% should be a colored highlight, which in this case is the Troll Blood base, and the last 10% should be your very sharp white or near white highlight. So to ballpark 30%, that's if you look at the model from the top down, that would be roughly 50%. So I come in just a little bit from that. So I don't let it kind of wrap around the model, I'll just stay focused to the top of the model and leave a little bit of the coal black looking around the edge. So if I look straight down on the model, that's kind of how I gauge what my 30% is. And I'm really trying to follow the fabric of Miles' costume. Now, Miles' costume is pretty skin tight. There's not a lot of wrinkles or folds to follow. And because he's youthful, his musculature is not really sharp and bulky. It's a very, he's a very, very smooth character. And that makes this a little bit daunting in a way because there's actually just not a lot of detail to build this onto. So again, I'm just using that top-down look and so I'm kind of looking at the model and just going, okay, where would just an overall, you know, noonday sun kind of highlight land? And that's what I'm working with is just the idea that there's just some environmental lighting that's coming from nowhere in particular, but it's mostly focused top-down because that really does the best job of building this comic style look because that gives you the idea of deep black under the model which gives you a little bit of an idea of like an outline and then the highlights on top give it a really good table read and give it a good table presence and that's one of the great things about comic styles that the models look good on the table from a further distance than maybe a more typical paint job would because they have these bright punches of color contrasted with very deep blacks and so even though his costume is black we want to include a little bit of this brighter colored highlight. And this is true of pretty much any time you want to paint black with acrylics. You don't want all of it to be black with just a little highlight on top or no highlight at all. 60, 30, 10, if you look at photos of things like a black car on a showroom floor or out, you know, parked on a sunny day, you're gonna see kind of the same ratios where the majority of it, but just over half is going to look black. And then the rest is environmental reflections. And that just about wraps up work on the black part of Miles' costume, but I may work in a few very sharp highlights a little later on in the process. Now a good part of Miles' costume is red. I'm going to be using Amethyst Rose as the base coat. This is a deep red with just subtle hints of purple in it, which will tie back to the blue tones we've already used. At this point here, I'm only painting his fingers because a lot of the rest of the red works into the webbing around his head and his torso and then there's sort of a big you know almost like a shoulder epaulette that just comes down into a v across his chest and we'll be getting that a little bit later right now i'm just picking the fingers out and we're going to keep moving on
And now I'm going to break out the Higgins Black Magic. This is my all-time favorite black ink to use for doing comic style miniatures. And normally this is the last step in my process, which is creating all the lines, the shadows, the little hatch marks and gimmicky details that really make it feel illustrated. This is a bit of a different step here today because this is a predominantly black costume. I want to get those big, heavy black shadows in right away and make sure the costume feels appropriately black because right now it actually feels like a dark blue costume. And that's fine if that's what you're going for. That's not what I want. I want this to feel black with some bluish tones in the highlights. And so right now I'm coming with the Higgins Black Magic and I'm just painting in those big blocky volume shadows and starting to define a little bit of the shape of the costume as well. But really the point here is I want to make sure before I start adding other colors in that the black outfit actually reads as black. And so as I'm creating these black shadows, I'm kind of keeping the inverse of the 60-30-10 rule in mind. I'm really looking at the model from the bottom and trying to fill it from the bottom up. So we get roughly that 50-60% break on the deep black. And basically anything kind of facing down and away is what's getting the black, as well as anything that gives me an opportunity to create a silhouette. And that's where, when you've got sort of like two limbs overlapping, the one that's going to be in the background from certain angles gets a little bit of extra black. And what that does, it lets the other limb, which will then have a splash of color, kind of feel like it's more in the foreground. This is used a lot in comics to help create a stance or a sense of action to a character. And we can really play with that and make it work for our miniatures as well. So you can see I'm kind of dropping a shadow along the back of the head, so from you know the back of the cranium down to the jaw, and what that's doing is it'll let there be a dark line around the head when viewed from certain angles. That's going to be a little bit mitigated by the red webbing we bring in a little bit later, but it's still going to have a subtle bit of like a comic lining effect to it. You also see I'm just adding a little bit of lining to some of the deeper musculature on Miles here, so there's the spine here is the perfect example and a couple little areas like here along the calf, just defining that little muscle group there, just putting a little bit of extra emphasis on it. My next step here is coming back in with the amethyst rose, the dark red I'm using, and starting to pick out that webbing along Miles' torso and along his head. And I'm starting with the big, wide, sort of deep V that starts at his shoulders, comes to the middle of his torso. Pulling that out, then we've also got the spider emblem, and then of course the little bits of webbing themselves. And this is probably more than any other part in this model. This is kind of just an exercise in patience, making sure you just don't goof up. You don't want to try and cover up the blues and the blacks we've already laid down. You want to leave them right where they are and just pick out the top raised edge of each of these little bits of webbing. And it is worth noting on this Spider-Man, they are a raised detail as opposed to Peter Parker where they're a sunk in detail. So you can pick them out pretty easily with the side of your brush and just kind of letting it run just a little bit along that raised embossed surface of the web. So if you found Peter Parker a little bit difficult trying to paint those black lines in, this should be not an order of magnitude easier, but certainly a little bit on the easier side. So you can see as I'm painting the small bits of webbing, especially on his head, I'm being very slow and deliberate. I don't want to make any mistakes here that I have to fix because it's just I'm going to be a bit of a time sink trying to fit little blue-black highlights back into these tiny little you know, grid spaces that the webbing creates. So I'm being extra slow and methodical. The other thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the model from multiple angles. Because these are an embossed detail, you want to kind of look at them from the left and right or the front and back and make sure that it doesn't look unpainted from one side versus the other. Sometimes you're going over the same little lines two or three times just to make sure they're perfect. And one of the last places I'm adding red here is around the eyes. Now I haven't painted the eyes themselves yet. They're going to be a bright white and blue. But for the moment, it's okay if I make a little bit of a mistake there. Obviously I don't want to make a mistake on the black side, but towards the middle of the eye because I have not painted that yet. If I have to air, I'm going to try and air that way. Alright, you can finally let out that breath you've been holding for the last 10 minutes and pick out your brighter red. In this case, I'm using Kador Red Base, but whatever bright red you've got on hand is fine. Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel is a great choice as well. 
basically we just want to step up our red value here and add some tiny little highlights to all this red webbing we've done. And if highlighting the webbing sounds like a really, really time consuming, difficult thing, it's actually not that bad. Again, because they are embossed details, it's really easy to just kind of run your brush along it. And we actually don't need a lot of highlights here. We're really just kind of focused on about the top half at this point. And just because of the way Miles is posed, that excludes a whole lot of the webbing. Now, having said that, comic style painting is much more about the cinematic feel from an intro as opposed to exactly where real light lands. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on the spider on his chest, even though it's really kind of a shadowed element, he's kind of hunched in and around it and it's facing downward. I still want it to actually be a little more prominent and kind of pull forward with some brighter colors. And to give a sense of him rushing forward, I'm putting highlights on both shoulders, which just kind of drives the action forward. And of course, his face is going to get some highlights because it's a pretty natural focal point on the miniature. And so now I am finally working on the head, and you see I'm adding most of the highlights around the eyes. I'll also be just going across the cranium, so the top of the head, and really brightening that up. A little bit of a highlight to kind of extend the jaw, make the jawline feel more prominent, isn't a bad idea too. You can kind of work a little bit in there. Whether you feel like doing that or not is totally up to you. And finally, a few little highlights on his fingers at the back here. Now, one red detail I completely forgot was the spider on his back. I was so focused on the webbing, the eyes, and the spider on his chest that this one just slipped my mind. So I'm coming back in now with Amethyst Rose, giving that a base coat, and we're going to highlight it as well. Just the same process. I'm going to speed through this one a little bit. As before, it's worth reiterating this is an embossed detail that's raised up off the surface and so you do want to look at the model from multiple angles and make sure you don't kind of leave a weird, you know, raised edge unpainted from certain sides. So look at the model from the front, back, top, bottom and just make sure that the spider emblem doesn't just look strange from a certain angle. Make sure it's, you know, all the edges are kind of covered. And now we're back to our Kadar Red base, our bright red here to add some highlights. There's really only two places here I need to add a highlight. The first one is right here across the top of the emblem, kind of where it's right on the left shoulder. And then the rest is gonna be more towards the lower right section because of the way Miles' back is kind of curving here. You know, his, his butt is almost parallel to the ground, but his back is almost 90 degrees. And so the whole emblem has a twist to it. And it's the bottom right corner that then becomes sort of a really prominent highlight point. And now I'm going to use an off-white, in this case P3 Underbelly Blue, to base coat Miles' eye lenses. We'll be adding a quick highlight after that with white. This is pretty straightforward. They're just kind of a pain to get a nice clean highlight on because they're really small details that are also kind of deeply recessed. Not too deep, but deep enough that you don't want to mess it up and cover up all the nice red work we've already done. And here's that white highlight, coming with a little bit of P3 Moro White and just basically adding a dot to the top right-ish or the top outside edge of each of the lenses. So earlier I brought out the Higgins Black Magic, my all-time favorite comic style ink, and used that to create big shadows and some shapes on the black parts of Miles' costume to make sure the black was reading well. Now that we've got all the red laid in as well as some of the white areas, basically his eyes, I'm going to go ahead and start adding even more black detail now. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to be outlining the red parts of the costume. And yes, that means outlining a lot of raised red webbing. This requires some patience, requires a steady hand. If you have neither or you're lacking one of them, just please, by all means, just skip it or, you know, just save it for a better day. 
it's worthwhile. I think it looks great on the miniature, but it is a lot of work and it's a lot of precise work. So just know that going in. Other areas here I'm adding these black lines to are around the spider emblems and between the white of his eye lenses and the red framing around the lens. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's going to take me a little while because there's a lot of really small details that have to be covered here. But it's a pretty straightforward, repetitive process. And that's all there is to it. It's, it's a finesse task that's just time consuming, but I think the results speak for themselves. Earlier I talked about my 60-30-10 approach for painting black and then kind of forgot about the 10. So here I'm going to bring a little bit of white in and just add those really sharp, bright points of highlight to the costume, specifically places like the knee, the elbow, the bicep, anywhere I want to really kind of pop out the definition of the model. So after working with the miniature for a while, I started to feel like his lower back was just this big flattish plain surface that wasn't doing a lot for the miniature, and I decided to add a little bit of volume shadow to it. The idea here is just create a little more of a sense of depth, a sense of motion, by making it seem like there's some distance between basically his butt and his back, so he's leaning more into the action. I'm doing that by creating a little bit of a black shadow and then just shaping it a bit at the bottom so it blends well into his fabric. Next, I'm going to start working on the mailbox using P3 Exile Blue and Signar Blue Base as my first two colors. At this point, Miles is done. We're actually just working on the basing elements now, so that's the mailbox and the base itself. With most of the mailbox, I'm being pretty sloppy, but as I paint the top, I'm just going to be extra careful to make sure I don't accidentally paint Miles' hand. Now using a lighter blue, in this case P3 Signar Blue Base, I'm making a bit of a highlight, aliasing it up to the top left of each of the panels here on the mailbox. And as I spin the mailbox around, I'm just always focusing on the top left panel, so no matter what angle you look at, you basically have two panels that have the light pushing up to the same corner. It's not really light, it's just a surface grading or kind of modulation, just to give it some color breaks and make it obvious where one panel stops the next one begins. The panel on top, because it doesn't really have a top left corner, I'm going to do a diagonal sort of highlight right through the middle, pretty much right underneath Miles. Grabbing a lighter blue, Signar Blue Highlight in this case, and basically just repeating the process, keeping it a little bit sharper, doing a little bit more of an edge highlight as well as I go. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight just to the bottom left corner of each of the blue parts of the post that the mailbox is on. Here I'm grabbing a mid-tone gray, in this case P3 Iron Hull gray, and I'm using that just to do some touch-ups on the bottom part of the mailbox. I keep calling this a mailbox, it's a newspaper rack. Anyway, there's a few details on it that need to be gray, just so it's not just a blue cube. There's a coin slot, there's a latch, there's a handle, and there's a little service panel on the back. Some of these could be blue, but for the sake of making this more interesting, again, just not a blue cube, I decided to paint them differently. This whole time, the base has just been plain primer. I'm going to come in with some Citadel Mechanica Standard Gray and just give it a quick base coat. It's not that different a gray than the primer, so you're not going to see a whole lot happen here. I needed a white or an off-white for the newspaper in the newspaper rack here, and I already had P3 Underbelly Blue on my palette from painting the super highlights and the eye lenses on Miles' costume. So I decided to just go ahead and use that here. The newspaper, of course, has to be the Daily Bugle, and it's pretty iconic with a big red header across the top with a black logo in the center. So I'm just painting in a black rectangle, and I'm using the Amethyst Rose partly because it was already on the palette as well. I'm recycling colors when I can, because otherwise I'm just busting out new paint. Adding the logo to the middle is just a matter of painting a tiny black square that's just a little bit taller than the red bar is. I'm just using some of the black that was already on the palette. This may be Higgins Black Magic, don't remember, and it's not that important, it's just some black. Using the white that's already on the palette, I'm adding some faux letters to the Daily Bugle header here. It's just a series of little dots and lines to give the impression of lettering and the impression of the logo. I'm not actually trying to write at this scale because I'm not that insane. The logo maybe looks a little bit like a bugle, 
following the faux header. We need a faux headline. I'm doing this in black so it looks pretty bold. And again, it's just some scribbles imitating the shapes of letters. I have no idea what it says and it's not meant to be legible. Now, it wouldn't be a copy of the Daily Bugle without a picture of Spider-Man on it. I'm just gonna paint a really quick, simple, little Spider-Man-ish silhouette. So right here, I'm just starting with a blue rectangle as the base for my photo. Using Kato Red Base, that's my bright red here, I'm gonna be painting in a silhouette of Spider-Man, and all I'm doing for that is a oval for his head and about a half oval for his shoulders, connecting to the bottom of the photo. That's it. Adding to that, two very, very small dots of white for Spider-Man's eyes. Lastly, I'm adding some body text in the newspaper, and I'm using gray for that as opposed to black so that it feels a little bit smaller, a little bit softer, and makes the title or the headline feel much more important and much more bold. At this point, I felt like the newsstand was just a little bit too dark, and so I'm bringing a little bit more of the brightest highlight in, and I'm painting it in really kind of roughly to get a little texture out of it at the same time. Now this part is honestly genuinely really fun. I'm gonna be adding some of Miles' signature graffiti to the newsstand here. To start with, I'm gonna just have a black blob that's been very roughly spray painted on. You can see I'm giving the edges a little bit of a smush, you know, making sure they're a little bit uneven, a little bit feathered, and creating some little tiny lines that make it look like the paint ran. Like someone just sat there with a rattle can and just blasted a big black blob on here. As proof that I've got the attention span of a squirrel, I decided to do a second coat on the base now. Yeah, okay. Continuing with my squirrel moment, I mixed about 50-50 Administratum Gray and Mechanica Standard Gray to get a mid-tone. I'm using that to highlight the edges and cracks and whatnot of the base itself. And one last layer of highlights on the base using Administratum Gray. I think this is as light as I'm gonna go. Okay, the squirrel's gone. We can work on the graffiti again. Don't know what that was about. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna be using some Kato Red Base, my nice bright red here. And within the confines of that black spray paint blob, I'm painting a red circle and then a really, really rough spider logo. It's just doing a body, eight arms that are kind of just, you know, arcing off of it. And then we're gonna do some really fun freehand spray paint effects. And by that, I mean, we're gonna have little bits of running paint, little areas where there's some overspray, stuff like that. With the spider legs on one side complete, I'm basically trying to mirror the pattern to the other side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be close. Now this is the part where we go from this being graffiti to spray painted graffiti. Little tiny runs of paint, basically coming from areas where, you know, the can would have stopped for a moment and a little bit of paint would have gathered. The other thing I'm doing is at the ends of each of the spider legs is creating a slightly bigger circle as if that's where the can either started or stopped. And there's just a little bit of a longer spray, so a little bit of like overspraying happened. It makes it much more convincing that it's spray painted as opposed to just painted on. And here's those little tiny overspray marks I was talking about, the little extra thick circles just at the end of the spider legs that make it look like the spray paint can was just held there for a second, really makes it feel authentic. All right, if you've been following along painting your own piece here, just take a moment to appreciate that graffiti. Take a look at it, just let it soak in, and just be genuinely proud of what you've created here. Oh hey, the squirrel's back. There's one little detail I forgot here, that's the service hatch on the back of the mailbox. Thought I got it earlier, clearly I didn't. Throw in some color on it now before we get into the inking. Okay, the squirrel's gone, got the Higgins Black Magic out, gonna do some comic style lining. I'm first just gonna start on the base. There's some really big obvious lines to go on here. The big deep X pattern of the base and then all the smaller little cracks that kind of emanate from that. Just follow the deepest recess of those. It's quick and easy and adds a lot to the base very, very quickly. Here I'm adding some quick black lines to separate the bottom of the newsstand from the base and also separate the different elements of the newsstand from each other. Pretty straightforward. The rivet on the side needs a little underline. It goes pretty quick. There's an inset edge to the front of the newsstand here and I'm just blacking that out before putting my outlines around the coin slot, the latch, and just kind of carrying on with the rest of the black line work. Oh, 
a lot of this is pretty straightforward. It doesn't really require any explanation because I'm just drawing lines around boxes. There's a lot of big square details here and I'm just outlining them. Simple as that. I'm also putting a big black shadow underneath the newsstand because there just doesn't need to be blue. It's just a big black area. You're never ever going to see it anyway. Okay, finally, this isn't a box, or at least it's only half a box. I'm outlining his hand. All right, all the basic outlines are done. It's time for some comic style shading goodness. Hatch marks, these are my favorite thing to do. They're just so fun. A series of quick little parallel lines that create the illusion of shading and shadow. Now near the bottom of the newsstand, we have that big black shadow we painted on the underside. And we can pull our hatch marks all the way up into it, create a nice deep transition from our hatch marks directly into the deep shadow. The back of the newsstand here has a little bit of a lip and I'm pulling my hatch marks out of that so there's just a little bit of a cast shadow from it. One of my favorite comic style freehand details to do are these little surface stains or little blemishes on surfaces. It's basically just an irregular kind of coffee stain sort of shape and you fill it with a little bit of hatch marking. It makes it look like there's either some damage or some stain to a surface and it really makes it look illustrated. I'm not gonna lie, the little sort of coffee staining detail here I'm doing is really heavily inspired by Borderlands. And I mean, other comics have been doing it too. It's not new, but it's on almost every single texture in Borderlands somewhere. So here I'm using thin black lines, just slightly inset on surfaces and in the darkest corner of each surface, and then using that line as sort of a direction to pull hatch marks into. Basically, I'm embellishing the dark light blue sort of pattern I've already created and just taking the dark side a little bit further, but I'm leaving a little bit of the blue showing around it, and that helps give you a little bit of an easier read on the edges of the model. What's funny is this actually really kind of illustrates how my comic style approach has changed over the years. When I first started doing this, I would have almost insisted on there being hard black outlines along all these sharp edges, and now I find you get a much better table if you just inset that lining just a little bit, to let that color pop and let the natural sort of true lighting of the model have a little bit of play as well. Because if you throw black right there, you don't give the model the opportunity for its own edges to shine. And so by just setting it back even, you know, half a millimeter or so, you let that live edge kind of do what it does and really pop. And it gives the model a little bit better table read. It looks ever so slightly less illustrated, but I think it's a really good compromise and it does give you a better looking model on the table, I feel. All right, we're on the home stretch. There's just a little bit of work left to do in the base here. I'm gonna add some of those, again, little sort of Borderlands style coffee stains to the bottom of the newsstand and to a couple random places on the base itself. After that, I just need to paint the base rim and we're basically set. So I'm just gonna add a few random blemishes to each of the little bits of concrete here, put some hash marks in them, paint the base rim, call it done. And there we are, Miles Morales Spider-Man is complete. This was a really fun and interesting project because there wasn't actually a lot of kind of traditional comic style elements in Miles' costume itself. So it really gave me the opportunity to embellish the base, the newsstand, and kind of draw those elements in there and just let that do the work. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, do something epic. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for comic style painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me. I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years, who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.